realistically, he's, he's, he's a, a third line center. I have to agree with that. Like, ever since that Colorado round, I don't think Calgary has really felt like a legitimate threat. I will go back. It's it's all oh, there. People talk about the trades that did sometimes the best trades that shouldn't have been is the ones he shouldn't have made. Really wonder about not acquiring Mark Stone at that trade deadline. Oh man, well that that would have been Val Mackey though. And well, Valimaki, that turned out to be a guy that they Vegas ended up signing for what five six years, to one of the top he, players in the game. And now he's a captain too. I I completely understand, and I would have loved loved having that but it's also also the what ifs of okay well yeah val Mackey, he's what 20 years old 21 years old having that young of a player that's making as many waves as he has within uh the flames community that's a hard hard pill to swallow um especially for how much of an impact would he would he have made within that colorado series i, I don't think much I don't. I, I you would oh, you would have had, oh, Kevin. You, you would have had one player that would have been amazing, and you would have had Mike Smith who stood on his fucking head. Those are two players out of uh, 17, 18 players that it could have been made a difference within that lineup, and they didn't. So, I, long term, it yeah, you, you could have Mark Stone, but I'd rather have Yusuf Alamaki. To be completely honest with you, looking back at it. I uh, I I don't know, I don't know. I don't. Dan, well, it would have been Alamaki and what? Would have been. I believe what I remember hearing was Balmaki, um, Dubé, and a first. And that that's a lot to give up with with Dubé being kind of a Johnny Gaudreau light type of player, smaller player that is able to dance that is that has a bit more size to him, that is a bit more grit to him. Um, I, I just feel like the, those two together with their potential and this potential, we don't know exactly what that is yet, but they're those two potential in comparison to Mark Stone being in his late twenties. I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 that, that, that's a hard, like I said, a hard pill to swallow for depending on whether or not you think that this team is or was willing to contend at that point. In comparison to okay, you could have a, a defender that could be fifteen to twenty plus y- years in this league. God, that yeah, I don't know. I get your hesitancy, but ultimately, I, I I feel like could he have been enough to push that team over the edge? Though, I, I honestly feel like if if the Flames had pulled that trigger and got Mark Stone and had to give that up at the time, like yeah, that's quite a bit to give up, but. Part of me wonders, like like you said, it's the what if, but like, what if Mark Stone was able to basically make the Flames a legit contender that season? It would have been a low, it would have been a very low first round pick. Um, I understood that you would have lost Dylan Dubé, and I get it. And I understood that you would have lost Yusuf Alamaki. That's tough, but you would have had two legitimate lines that you would have been able to use at that particular point in time. You probably don't. You probably don't end up signing a James Neal for an overpriced contract, um, and you probably could get another defenseman to replace Valimaki at some particular point in time. And I'm not then, saying that Valimaki is not a great defenseman, but you you probably could have went with a back. You could have had your Monahan, Goudreau, Lindholm, Backlund, Kachuk, and Mark Stone line some sort of combination there. And that would have been really tough to beat Colorado. And that, like, would have been a shot at a cup. It honestly would have been a shot at a cup. Would it have been, though? Because the the, the, the monahan Gaudreau line was not – wasn't producing at all in that in that series. But you could have made some switches around. Like, I think Mark Stone could have added oh, something. It's, I, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. He could I, I, on the team last year. Do they, do they not choke against Dallas? And I, I get where you're coming from, Deb, with Valimaki. I think there's something there with Valimaki, but Dylan Dubé is replaceable. Oh like he's a, no, he's, no, 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 Hold on. Hey, you're the one that tells me to shut up and let me fin- let, let you finish. Well, that's a fucking ridiculous take. Uh, no, no, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. 
Dylan Dubé is a Dylan Dubé currently is a middle six forward. Correct. Well, he's on the top two lines. He's on. I would argue yeah, he's on the number because, one line. He's he's not a middle two six forward man. He's uh, on the right side. Yeah, he, he is a second line player. Period. On any team. I I, I have to disagree with you on that one, Devin. But let let the be. It's fine to be wrong. It's fine. Second, it's okay. Second okay. line player, and he he's putting up half a point per game. How old is he? Oh, I know. He's still he's still young. Yep. He still has he? he still has some growth. But I just at this point, if you have two deep playoff runs with Mark Stone, with the potential, I think you take that. That that's a de- that's a decent gamble to make. I can understand why you're hesitant on that price. It's a steep price to tip to pay, but I still think it's something that uh, if that was the top offer and the. Fl- uh, and you had that option, you have to think hard, hard about that because Mark Stone, like if Isha was on here right now, he'd be yelling at you for try for saying don't not to not to trade he for the second, he's best. the second best player in the <laughs> fucking league, dude. <laughs> I agree, Although, he's a great player, he's a fantastic player, but he's not the second best he's player. Top in this league. He's top 10, he's top 10. He's not the second best player in this league. I, I, the other, I, I, the other I, thing is who who on this on this Flames team is a Selkie level player. It's maybe not about Lindholm. Selkie level players, man. It's maybe, about maybe having Lindholm. maybe Lindholm, maybe. maybe. But you you want to have depth throughout the line. You don't want to fucking have a, a top two lines that are like fucking amazing and then it's shit underneath it. Look at the look with what's happening with Edmonton, man. You have two top players there too that are willing and able to put up points and do great things, but like I, I it's, they're playing it's, better like, than Calgary right now. As much as you want to take shots at them, they're they're the top three team in the great. Well, let's see let's see what they do in the playoffs. Let's see let's see what happens here with uh, when when they have a seven game series against a, a legit fucking good team. I hear Graham yelling at you right now. I, I just hear it. I hear it. <laughs> I hear it, Graham. I love you, man. I really do. I I I, I really don't know if that's what you're yelling at me for, but <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Graham. All right, and I, I love you, yes, too. I love you both. Yeah. But okay. Okay. Move, we're moving all... on too. Before we go too Dude. far, oh, what were you gonna say, Devin? What were we gonna Jesus let, let Christ, it, man? Let um, it, let I'm, it. I'm defending Dubé right now, and you're just like, okay, moving on. You're like, shut up, God, I. <laughs> Dubé having two uh, having a top three defenseman a top three defenseman within this is league. Valimaki actually a top three defenseman? Shut up! Having a top three defenseman in this league that has potential to be that as good as he is, and having a top six to nine forward, I would rather have depth within my lineup than one fucking good player. Period. And let alone putting up giving up a first overall pick. That could be a potential game changer within that core. The, the the core that's growing up within this of Ad Anderson, of Ham Hannafin, of Valamaki, of Manjipani, of Kachuk, um, Lindholm. He's a bit older, but he's a part of this core going forward. I think the I think that he is untouchable. I feel like um, uh, Dubé is a part of that as well. Those type of players are the players you fucking need that are supporting players within this lineup that you, you, you should have. And giving up one fucking player for all of that, that does not make any sense to me. But if you one have a thing I want to interject with, though, it's not a perfect parallel, but it is a parallel. So your thing about Mark Stone... Like, we had to give up a first-round pick for JT Miller, and that's worked out fairly well for the Canucks. So, like, if we're talking about Mark Stone instead of JT Miller, like, is, is that something that could have potentially worked for the Flames? Absolutely. J, JT Miller is 28 years old. He was 27 when he got uh, when he got traded. Um, a Mark Stone, his age is, I guess, 28. <laughs> I stand corrected. Uh, no, but oh, oh, I mean, oh, honestly, an argument though, by, by using Devin's own words. <laughs> that, that, that's completely fair. That is completely fair. But 
It's whether whether or not you think that you're you're within the realm of winning right now, or you see the core coming up uh, within the within the system to make that difference later on. And that if it works out now, great. But if it doesn't, you you're not fucking up that your uh, your your prospects here. And who uh, does anybody know who that uh, number one pick was going back to? Uh, that was the Jacob Pelche uh, draft. Yeah, T- Tampa Bay. Who who did who did they pick? How how well is he? Oh, doing? Tampa. Yeah. Uh, who did they pick? Uh, that was last year, sure. though. He's just he just that's that was last year. I know. I understand that. I understand that. But once again, it, it's about the long term. Like you'll you 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 look at back at, at this uh, potential trade that could have happened, and you can break it down. It's once again going to the drafts and being like, okay, well we tri- we picked Trevor Kidd. Okay, Martin Broder. He got picked next. How well did he do? <laughs> Mason McDonald, Thatcher, Demko, right? Uh, Kucherov, oh, yeah. he was late, late first round pick. How well has he done? Like it, 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 it's all those what ifs that could have happened. And I'm more so going towards the, the not for sure thing, but the, the more for sure thing than having a Mark Stone and then having. Uh, I, once again, I, I'm all about I'm all about depth. I really am in comparison to having one good fucking player. Okay. I, I respect your your opinion. I just don't agree with it. Yeah, that that's I I I think I definitely think this is a poll question. I absolutely would. I think that this is a poll question because I I I also disagree with you, Devin. I would have done the trade. I think I Devin's think. on his own on this one. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's not the first time. It's not the last. I will. I I, I you know what? I'm I'm not going to die on this hill. But I'll uh, if if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, and that yeah. that's that's totally fine. But I mean, there, there's no real way to to kind of say that I would be wrong within this instance because um, you, you can see down the road that, uh, you know, Yusuf Al-Maki will be a, a captain within this league. And that's that's kind of what he has in his bloodlines and what, what, what he's shown within this, uh, within this hockey career that he's created with him uh, through the WHL to the NHL. And uh, to me, that, that speaks volumes. So uh, all three of you can go fuck yourselves.